I'm going to take a walk down memory lane a little bit because I keep reading these stories about you hitting golf balls into your mum's washing machine and everything else. How old were you when you first realised that you could play this game? Um, when, I, when I first realised I could play this game was probably... Um, my first real memory of being on the golf course is when I was four years old. Um, but you know, there's pictures of me hitting golf balls at 18 months. So <laughs> I think that's the first time that my parents realised that I could play this game. And uh, you know, we grew up. I grew up very close to to my home golf club. Uh, golf was just always in my life. My dad was a good player. Uh, my whole family played golf. It was just sort of something that we did. And uh, yeah, you know, I started a very a very early age, and it just sort of snowballed from there. Did you use your dad's clubs, Jerry's clubs, or did he, did he get you a set early on in life? Uh, I, I used his old clubs, but he, he cut them down, obviously right. very small. Um, I still have in my house, I actually framed them, uh, my first two golf clubs, so I had a five wood and a putter. <laughs> five woods, I mean, it's so small, the grip's nearly as long as the shaft, <laughs> and uh, it's a little John Letters five wood, and I've got the putter and my first glove as well. So I've got those framed, uh, and they're in my house, which is uh, a pretty cool thing to have. Now, when things started to get better and you, you know, I don't know, how old were you? Then Jerry said, OK, we've got to take this a little bit, your dad, seriously. What age were you then? Because you won the World Junior Championships at what age? Yeah, at nine years old. So I won the under 10s. Um, so I guess at that point, um, you know, my mum and dad thought that, you know, if, if we if we want to give Rory an opportunity at, at, at you know, making something of this game, um, you know, you had to travel around the world, play the junior tournaments, and uh, you know, once I started to win some of those, you know, we realised that you know something you know could really happen, and and then I, I started to beat the men in some of the amateur events back home when I was 14 and 15, and uh, I guess that was the that was the point for me when I realised that I could actually you know turn pro and you know make a career out of it. When you were going through school, I mean, <clears throat> some of your schoolmates, I mean, you would say 13, 14, were there other sports, and did they say? golf what are you doing playing golf yeah I think the thing in Ireland and um, it, golf is a big part of the culture you know it's very accessible all my friends played golf growing up so uh, it wasn't like it was just me so um, obviously there's different sports I, I played quite a lot of football or, or soccer growing up uh, played a little bit of rugby until I didn't want to get injured and my mum definitely didn't want me playing so uh, yeah, it was only from around you know eleven or twelve years old. It, it was always just golf. When you turned pro, was eighteen? Was it? Yeah. You turned pro. Did it go the way that you thought it might as a professional? No, it didn't. Um, it went better than I expected, to be honest. I I turned pro w when I was eighteen, and I didn't know what to expect. I you know I went to the first stage of tour school in Europe. Uh, I got through that, and then I had a few invites. You know I. I try I had seven invites lined up to try and make my you know get my tour card for the next year and luckily I you know I, I played well um, you know I, I finished third in the Dunhill Links Championship which in my second event as a pro which really you know secured my tour card and then I went to Madrid the next week and finished fourth so all of a sudden in the space of you know four weeks of turning pro I've, I've got my tour card and I'm already on the European tour so it went way better than expected. Um, you know, it was it was good timing. I was playing well. Um, you know, and I just got the the lucky break that I needed. And Rory, then you got yourself on the major champions board, the U.S. Open, uh, winning and beating all kinds of records. Jack Nicklaus's records. Uh, gosh, you had so many. You haven't got enough time. Then the U.S. PGA, and and then lots and lots of press about you being you know next to Tiger Woods. How have you taken all that? Yeah, I mean, I. I've never compared myself to him because to Tiger because you know he's done things in golf that no one else is going to do you know in terms of bringing a different audience to the sport um, inspiring you know a generation of golfers that are sort of my age uh, you know I'm never going to be able to do that you know I, I'll, I'll be able to achieve some of the things that he has and I'd like to achieve you know a lot of stuff on the golf course but you know, in terms of what Tiger Woods has done for golf, I'll never be able to do, and I'm very comfortable with that. <laughs> Rory, you travel a lot, you're playing the world, and uh, you've just had some time off, of course, but um, a phone call back home, do you make that to catch up with friends or with family or even with Michael Bannon? You're still being coached by Michael? Yeah, I am, yeah. I spent some really good time with Michael over the past four weeks, and, uh, you know, I feel really good about my game. I've sort of, you know, it's it was nice to, to get home and, you know, 
feel rejuvenated a little bit. So it's nice to get back out. You know, I was excited to get back out on tour and excited to get here to Korea. But uh, yeah, I mean, keep in touch with all my friends and you know my family and um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's no place like home, and I try and get back as much as I can. Now, in any sport, Wayne Rooney can't score in every Manchester United game, and um, Alistair Cook can't score a century for England all the time. So you're going to get your good days and your bad days. You're coping with those better now than maybe a couple of years ago. You're still young. Yeah, I am. Um, I think for me as well, I, you know, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve with my golf, and you know, if I play badly, it affects you know my mood. I'm sad, and if I play well, I'm happy. And you know, sometimes I might be a little too emotionally attached to my golf in terms of how it affects my mood, but um, it's not a bad thing. It shows passion. It shows that you want to do well. But uh, yeah, I mean, everyone's going to have bad days and, and, and no one's perfect and, and everyone's going to make mistakes. And, you know, I accept that and I accept that, um, you know, there is going to be some days that are worse than others. But, you know, as long as, you know, you you really relish the, you know, the, the highs and you you, you learn from those as long as you you know you learn from your mistakes but you also have to learn from you know from your your victories as well and um, I feel like I'm getting better at doing that. Finally what's a great year obviously winning a major is it Ulster Rugby winning the European Cup is it Manchester United winning the Premiership what is it? Um, give, me, give, give me five things. Five things uh, winning a major um, United winning the <laughs> winning the Champions League. Um, United being in the Champions League next year at this rate. Uh, Ulster winning the Heineken Cup, the European Cup would be uh, would be fantastic. Um, you got two more. Two more. Oh, I don't know. Winning two majors. <laughs> um, okay, one more. Uh, winning three. No, I'm um, one more. Oh, I'm trying to think. Um, mom and dad to be there while you do it. Yeah, my, yeah, my mum. My mum. My mum hasn't been. Um, to the previous two majors that I've won. So I'd love my mum to be there for the next one.